What's going on people, welcome back to my personal channel and welcome back to another episode of Unpopular Opinions. If you guys haven't been keeping track of the last few episodes, this is Unpopular Opinions, a show where you leave your unpopular Chelsea related opinions either on Twitter or down in the comment section below. We look through your unpopular opinions and we discuss whether we think you're onto something or whether we think you're smoking AstroTurf. As usual, before we start this video, if you guys haven't done so already, please smash that like button, hit that subscribe button as well, and if you're feeling lucky and you want to go for the hat trick, press the bell notification button as well to be the first to know whenever we release any new content. Guys, again, thanks for jumping on. If you don't want to see more of this series, I will drop another Unpopular Editions next week. I, haven't, I think we're running out of Unpopular Editions for the rest of this week, so if we need a few more, please drop it down in the comment section below. And yeah, let's go straight into Unpopular Opinions. Third kit is fire. See, I don't know, I can't believe I'm saying this now, but it's actually starting to grow on me a little bit. It's becoming a regular theme with these night kits. I, I've been so used to Adidas kits, but I've had to kind of teach myself that Nike create their kits completely different to Adidas. If you look at the way Adidas make their home kits, it's usually based off a template of some old Chelsea kit. Whereas with Nike, they're always trying to experiment with something new and something different. And it's always meant that whenever I first look at it, I'm sitting there like, what the hell is this crap? But after a month or two, I, it starts growing on me a little bit. I start seeing the players out in it. I start seeing us have some great moments in the kit. And it starts warming to me a little bit. It was the same thing with the home kit. I didn't like it initially. Now I love it. I need to get that home kit as well. Same thing with last season's kit. That one grew on me so mad and I still need to get that kit as well. Third kit though. I still feel a bit iffy about Chelsea wearing red, but I still think I would end up getting it only because I know that third kit's going to be a massive collectible in like five or ten years because of how little people are actually buying it. Also, if we end up making some more big moments in there, I mean, Hakim Ziyech having his first start and getting a man of the match against Krasnodar, tiny memory, but it was a great performance and that's something to link the shirt to at least. So, yeah, third kit. It's growing on me. I'm not going to say it's fire just yet, but it is still growing on me. We do one more game of madness in it, though, and I think that's it. Zuma has been our best central defender since John Terry left the club. A close second was Gary Cahill. Mm, best? I'm not so sure. He's, he's definitely up there. Like, I'm not going to disrespect or nothing. He's up there, but I'm not sure if he takes best since John Terry left. I think Azpilicueta has been a quality centre-back for the time we put him there under Antonio Conte. Um, who else? Thiago Silva, I think, just has to be in there on his own. Kurt Zuma's around there. Gary Cahill, since John Terry left the club, I probably wouldn't. I think he really struggled living up to John Terry's legacy in that second season under Antonio Conte. David Luiz as well, he had that good season in 16-17 and then just disappeared after that. So, Kurt Zuma maybe, but I'd probably go for Thiago Silva or Cesar Azpilicueta before him. Andre Schola would have been a Chelsea legend had he stayed and we didn't bring Cuadrado. Uh, there is a huge speculation, there's a lot of speculation in this. Um, Andre Schola was great at Chelsea and arguably might have peaked there I mean definitely peaked in terms of the biggest club he was at but in terms of performance I'm not sure because he did bang out at Bayer Leverkusen as well before joining us he left because of though he had he had some big stomach problem I think and Jose and he just lost his place in the side and could never get it back and that ended up with him leaving in January it was an it was a shame seeing him go at the time because he was a quality player and in my opinion he hadn't been at Chelsea for long enough he'd been there for about 18 months at that point and he already endeared himself to the Chelsea fans I will fully agree with you that we should not have brought in Cuadrado that might have been single-handedly one of the worst chances that we've ever made in our history what was it T uh, 23 million and Mohamed Salah going the other way on a free I mean talk about hindsight 2020 but if we want to talk about second spell we're just going to go around in circles talking about De Bruyne and Lukaku as well. Would he have been a Chelsea legend? Massive stretch. I'm probably not going to say that. He would have done a lot better if he stayed at Chelsea. I think as a plan B, Andre Schola was an amazing option to have on the bench. And we were and when we're speaking of Chelsea's depth at the time, Andre Schola was a big reason we were talking about that. Also adds to the fact he was a huge Chelsea fan and was balling out. We always love to see that. He would have been a cult hero. I'll leave it at that. He would have been a cult hero if he stayed. Kante, Kovacic and Havertz should be on midfield free. No debate. I'm not sure. I mean, it's a strong midfield. But I also think we can't just ignore Mason Mount like that. I think the good thing is, it's again, like I just said in the previous question. 
depth. We have so much depth, especially midfield. You can talk about adding Jorginho into there as well. We're thinking about adding another DM into that midfield as well. Yeah, um, it's a strong midfield three. You can make a debate over whether it should be Kante, Havertz and Mount or Kante, Kovacic and Havertz. Um, I mean, they both had, they all three of them had an amazing game against Sheffield United. It is also a bit of speculation because I have said I do want to see how this 4 3 3 formation works against a team that isn't on the joint lowest goals scored in the Premier League, which is both Burnley and Sheffield United. But we will find out in the space of a few weeks. Strong midfield three. You can make an argument for putting Mason Mount in there. Tiny bit of debate, just a tiny bit. Sorry, dented Kante's career by bringing in Jorginho and playing him out of position. I hate this argument man i've been having this argument with chelsea fans for years how did he play N'Golo Kante out of position? Claudio Ranieri played Kante as a box-to-box -box midfielder. Can, before he joined Leicester City, played him as a box-to-box -box midfielder. Antonio Conte played him as a box-to-box -box midfielder. Frank Lampard prefers Kante as a box-to-box -box midfielder. So, of course, Maurizio Sarri is going to play him as a box-to-box -box midfielder. And also, yeah, you can say he didn't have as many interceptions under Maurizio Sarri. He didn't have as many tackles. Well, of course not. That we had the majority of possession if you have the majority of possession you aren't going to be making as many tackles as you would in a defensive minded side it just doesn't work like that also if you want to say sorry dented Kante's career he played him a bit further forward and he scored more goals in one season than he ever has done in his entire career so we can't really say that sorry dented N'Golo Kante's career seeing as he also walked out with a Europa League in a third place spot that season sorry bummy argument I'm not hearing it Kepa was our most impactful player last season. I mean, if we're going to talk about it in a negative way, yeah, he was. I don't think he's trying to troll. I think this guy's actually being serious, and I get the point that he's trying to make. He was our most impactful player last season. Chelsea would have finished second without him. We would have finished second with, our competent, with a competent goalkeeper. And I stand by that, and I say that with my chest, because I know it's true. Look at how our defence is performing now, and all we did was just put Thiago Silva and a goalkeeper in there. And even with Willy Caballero, we were still struggling because we didn't believe in the goalkeepers that we had. If we had a semi-competent goalkeeper that can give the defence a little bit of confidence and not make them play every game on eggshells thinking, crap, if we let a player through, that's it, it's 1-0. Yeah, we would have got second. We dropped so many points in stupid places that entire season. So, yeah, Kepa was our most impactful player that season. Morata would have been a hit striker if he didn't suffer that back injury. A little bit. Here's the thing. I get Morata had a lot of other circumstances in that first season. He had a fair bit of injuries. I think he also lost a family member or a friend at the start of that season. And I completely understand how that can impact a player's performances. But same way, I don't think that effort was there from Morata. I don't know if it was depression or something like that. But I still haven't really seen this, the same sort of player that we signed for 58 million at Atletico Madrid or at Juventus either. So, no... I, th I think I get it for a certain point, but I also don't want to use it as too much of an excuse. Fact is, he was one of the worst strikers I've seen in the Chelsea shirt. He didn't press, didn't want to press, couldn't score a one-on-one, -on -one, and was genuinely only world-class if he was getting the same sort of ball whipped in by Cesar Azpilicueta from the exact same position. So, would he have been a hit striker? Not really. He's just a bit of a header merchant, if we're being honest about it. Ben Chilwell is showing why he's worth 50 million. The majority of the fan base was wrong for not wanting him over a Tagliafico or Tellez. I don't blame the fan base for want for maybe wanting another left back. I will say some some fans are definitely eating some humble pie after the comments Ben Chilwell uh, Ben Chilwell was getting before he joined Chelsea because there were a lot of fans DMing him saying don't come to Chelsea we don't want you at Chelsea you're a bum we don't want you at Chelsea them are the, they those guys are the ones that are eating that humble pie right now everyone else. I don't really say too much. Me personally, I've already said multiple times, I didn't really care what left back we got. We could have got Tagliafico, we could have got Tellez, we could have got Ben Chilwell. We could have got anybody really. We had Marcus Alonso and Emerson. We just needed somebody competent. It was the same thing as in goal. We just needed somebody competent to fill in and do a job. We've got Ben Chilwell who's exceeding expectations. He's already the best left back we've had since Ashley Cole. Like I said, the bar has been in hell since Ashley Cole's left or since Azpilicueta moved out of that position. But yeah, Ben Chilwell, he's definitely shown why he's worth 50 million. I'm glad we've gone for 50 million either as well because I think the big argument with Ben Chilwell joining was the price because it was initially meant to be 80 million but for 50 million i rate it conte over sorry any day 
Th this one is literally just to your preference. I think as a manager, Sari gave you the better football, but Antonio Conte did have the better moments under as a Chelsea manager. Antonio Conte definitely left under the worst of terms, but also it's dependent on your preference. Conte left it on worse terms with the board, Sari left on bad terms with the fans. This one is really just up to which one you prefer. Me personally, I love both managers. I will lean a bit more to Antonio Conte though because I can't lie, following Chelsea in that 16-17 season was absolutely glorious. And I don't think I've had a better season following Chelsea home and away than that. Please take William back. <laughs> hey, first off, big up Claude in the comments as well. But now, nah, William is your problem now. We done warned you already about William. We said he was going to be poor and you man told us he was our best player and you signed Chelsea's best player yet again. And we told you this guy is only going to give you two or three good games in a season and look what happened. You had that banging game against Fulham where you got two or three assists and then what happened? That free trial expired and you got the same old William that we've been complaining about for years. The funny thing is, right, I've been seeing Arsenal fans literally moaning about the exact same thing that we have been moaning about with William for years. The guy doesn't beat the first man, he gets to the final third and then he has stage fright. The guy passes sideways and backwards all the time. I, I said it for ages. I put a video out as well saying why William is a bad idea. Guys, please, I beg you, if you're here, read the comments on that video. Go back to that why William shouldn't have signed for Arsenal video and look at the comments. Look at the amount of gooners saying that I'm salty, saying that I'm moaning that they're taking our best player, that I'm salty about the FA Cup final. Guys, who is laughing now? You know the saying, he who laughs last, laughs the loudest. <laughs> Although I do say that North London Derby is coming in a few weeks and that does mean William is probably going to score in that game. Which also does mean he'll endear himself to Arsenal fans for the next three or four months and he'll use that to ride out the rest of his contract for the next year and a bit. But you lot, William is your problem now. Enjoy him for the next three and a half months three and a half years or if there's a four year extension as well that is your problem now enjoy also up the chels but yeah that is the end of unpopular opinions for you guys today let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my comments down in the comment section below if you guys have any unpopular opinions as well drop it in as well and yeah um is there anything else to say not really too much just like and subscribe to carefree lewis g and i'll see you guys tomorrow take care up the chels